great to have everyone here this morning, and most important of all, it's great to have the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 So, thank you, Lord, and uh, as promised, uh, the part of what I'm going to be talking about t- this morning is you know, where do we put our trust? And, and um, obviously, as Christians, our trust is supposed to be in the Lord, and I'll be in, uh, enlarging on that in a little while. But um, I just was was thinking, I come, I gather together with you guys a lot. And sometimes it's in smaller groups, and sometimes it's all us together. And um, I'm, I'm expecting as many as can to be here. But I am trusting that Jesus will show up. Amen. That's what I hang on to. That's what I, that, that, and you know what? I, I felt a little bad about how I said this last week after I thought about it. Um, and I was, remember I was, I was just said how much I appreciated the Latino group coming and becoming a part of our church. And, and, and I thought, and I, and I expressed how much I loved, I loved their hugs and I loved their smiles. Um, and, and at their words, I thought, did, did the Anglo church think that I thought they were just chopped liver? You know? And the answer is no. I think you know that. Um, but I just, I did want to point that out. I did, I just want to let you know that I really, really appreciate the family of God that has been a part of us and we have been a part of for all of these years. And, and that is awesome. That is very special. Um, I, I look at Naomi over here and, and um, I knew Naomi before uh, she ever got married. Uh, we were, we, we went to youth camp in, in Seattle, Washington area way too many years ago okay but you know that that's how long that's how long some of these relationships go and and kathy um back in that same uh, uh camping area uh with with youth camp and it was it was an awesome time of the goodness of the lord and as a young teenager being in the in a place where they just really opened their hearts to the lord that was a, an awesome time pardon oh yeah yeah she was just a little kid when, when I was there, yeah. <laughs> not. <laughs> but gathering together, we trust, we trust that the Holy Spirit will join us. Jesus said, we're two or three gathered together in my name. There I am with them. And, and, and I don't come here just for a social gathering. No. I, love, I love you guys. And, and, if, and if we are getting together on a work day or if we're getting together on, a, on, on, a, on somebody's birthday party or if, you're, if, if we're getting together just having lunch after church or something, I enjoy that. But that's not why I come here. That's not why I come here. I come here on, on Sundays and, and Wednesdays and then other times when we're gathering together unto the Lord. Because we gather together not to a birthday party. We don't even gather together for the nice fellowship that we do have. We gather together unto him. And my trust is, when, I, when we do that, he shows up. And the, and the awesome thing, um, one time I was, uh, man, yeah, sometime, somehow I, I'm reminiscing a little bit today, but that's okay. I was in college, and, and, I, and I lived about 45 miles away from the college that I went to. And, and our, the little church that we went to was almost at my house. It was close, and so it was about a 40-minute drive from the, from the college. And... Um, there was one time I was driving down the road on a Wednesday night, and, 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 and it was like, you know, the, the thought went through my head. You know, driving on the road, crazy thoughts can go through your head. And this was not a good thought, but it wasn't bad, but it's just a crazy thought. It's like, why am I going tonight? There's just going to be, a, you know, as 8 or 12 and no more. And that's just all that's going to be there. Because it was a small, almost like a house church. Um, and, and, and it was like I was driving, and, and I, was, I was letting these thoughts go through my mind. And, and, and all of a sudden, a thought went through my mind was, yeah, but you never know. Jesus is there, and if Jesus is there, you never know when something absolutely phenomenally awesome is going to happen as we gather together unto him. And, and I, cannot, I cannot lie to you and tell you that every time we gather together that the heavens break open and lightning bolts come down and we are just walking in the heavenlies and the glories of the Lord and, and we just walk out a whole new person. I can't, I can't guarantee you that. But what I can guarantee you that is that we're in the presence that that can happen. We're in the presence that miracles can happen. We're in the presence that lives can be being changed. 
by the presence of the Lord. And that, is, that happens as we come together unto him. So that's who I trust in. And that's why I'm here. Um, okay. Um, children are people. We, last week we took an offering, mentioned them. We have a, a, an orphanage that we help take care of. Um, and and a, a ministry, not just an orphanage, but a ministry group uh, that we help uh, take care of in, in uh, Africa. Uh, Kenya? Yeah. Um, and um, uh, Sister Kathy's been there, and uh, what, about two times have you gone? Three times now, and you're, going, you're planning on going again. Um, and COVID kind of slowed some of that down, but, but she's been there, and, and, and we know these people. Um, we're, we're confident that when we send money their way, it is being used in the right way. Um, and we want to make sure that we bless them as much as we possibly can before Christmas this year. Okay, and last week we had a, a, a good offering, over $600 came in, uh, but others have mentioned to me, um, you know, please, please say something again because I, I, I missed it, okay, I, was, I, I, didn't, I wasn't prepared to give an extra offering. So today we're giving more, in fact, this whole rest of this month, anything that you put in the missions, unless this marks specifically something different, will go to the children or people group in, uh, in um, Africa. Uh, we would like to bless them. They have, uh, they, the ministry has expanded, um, and um, there are uh, a numbers of places that, this, that the funds are used, but in the orphanage, um, the, um, I'm almost, um, I'm, I'm, well, I am convicted, but I'm, I, I, I guess that's the best word I can use. Uh, when, I, when I remember that on Christmas Day, they hope to be able to give the kids at the orphanage one piece of meat, along with the rice and beans and whatever else, the vegetables that they have, and a soda pop, a bottle of soda. That's their, that's their Christmas dinner. Um, and, and I, and I want to make sure that they get at least that. So as we give, let's give generously to, to bless them. Um, do you know particularly how many kids are in the orphanage per se right now? Over 100. And I know the ministry covers way, way, way more than that. But the orphanage itself is, is over 100. And we will supply for, in January, several amounts that will come. Cost for prescriptions, training, so yep. we can support that. Yeah. Um, there's some kids that need to be cared for. Yep. And then we have one offering in August that will be for all of them. Yep. Yeah. And, um, lot of the kids in the orphanage it came from um, Sudan. Sudan, yeah, with, with all of the trouble that's been going on in the Sudan, um, and, and so they have literally rescued kids out of that environment, um, and, and they're there, and, but, and, and they're there um, growing both in, with education and stuff like that, but in the presence of the Lord. This is a, this is a Christian organization. And they minister into the lives of those kids in a wonderful, wonderful way. So we know that we're doing double blessings into their lives. Okay, um, uh, tonight, 6 o'clock here for prayer. Wednesday night, uh, 7 o'clock, we have um, Bible study. And Dan Shum has been working and ministering from the, from the, uh, the perspective of uh, uh, word appreciation. That's a little vague. But it, it's, it's essentially helping us understand the Bible, helping us understand why we appreciate the Bible, why we think it is the word of God, and why we believe that it is pretty accurately the word of God. Okay, and, and I appreciate the first two, and what, have you got two or three more? Don't know? Yeah. We just, okay. We're, we're, yeah. you know, when we do Bible study, we don't care if it goes a little longer. Okay, if I'm going to preach, if my preaching gets too long, I'll come back next week. And then it's the same way. If it, if it seems to be building, then he can just, he'll just add one more onto it. So, and that's good. We, we appreciate uh, the efforts of those that put into the teaching of the word. And we have been blessed tremendously over the years um, by the Bible study times that we've had. So I want to encourage you about those. Um, okay, I think, I think that that's everything I, that I need to mention. Um, so let's all stand. Brother David. Yes. We do have the ladies meeting. Oh. On the 26th, from 6 to 7, here at the church. Okay. Ladies, and you will be joined with the, the, some of the ladies from the Spanish church. 
um, November 29th, get a flyer up here, it's sitting here. Uh, no, 26th, I'm sorry. November 26th from 6 to 7 here at the church. So if you want to keep track of that, you can grab one. That's for ladies. And uh, they, they try to do that once a month, and that's a wonderful time that they gather together. Um, so before we start, could some of you just reach around and lay your hands on Ernie? Yeah, you. <laughs> he's, he, he's in pain. The doctors are trying to figure out what's going on, but he's in pain. And um, we just need to pray together. Father, yes. right now, in Jesus' name, we speak into Ernie's body, healing and health. Yes. Father, we come against the enemy who's out to kill, steal, and destroy. And Jesus, we open our hearts and we pray the power of God into his body in Jesus' name. Because you came to give abundant life. And if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in him, it's going to quicken and make alive and strengthen his mortal body. And Father, in Jesus' name, we speak into his body healing and speak into his body health. And Father, we rebuke the pain. We stand against that now and we speak into his body health, Lord. Proper functioning of every area of his body so that this pain is gone. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Father, we know that there are people here in this fellowship, and, and some of them maybe not here this morning, that are battling in their physical body. And Father, we lift them to you. God, our hearts break when we know that there are people suffering, and when it's in our own fellowship, even more so, Lord, we pray against that in Jesus' name. We pray the power of your Holy Spirit working in hearts and lives, Lord God, bringing physical healing, bring emotional healing, Lord, bringing a stirring and a, and a presence of your Holy Spirit within them, Lord, to bring encouragement and strength and health and life. And Father, we thank you for this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, come, bless the Lord. Oh, and um, today, um, right after, what time? Right after service? Okay, pretty closely after the service, there's going to be our first meeting of New Believers gathering, okay? New Believers class, so that's going to be here today. Almost forgot that one. That was really important. Yeah, yeah. Anybody's welcome. You don't have to be a new a new believer, but that's especially to help them get started in their walk in the Lord. Okay. Those of you who know me know that I love the Word of God, and in loving the Word of God, I use a lot of Bible verses when I preach. But I'm going to start off and and not talk about Bible verses for a little bit. Um, there have been a few times that I have felt like I needed to apologize for even being a male, a man. Um, when I have visited with different people and counseling with, especially this happens to be you know, a, a lady that I, was, that I was with. She happened to be at the jail, so I was not there by myself with her. Um, and um, I heard she, she didn't, it, it wasn't like she was spilling her guts, but she, as she talked about her life, and we were getting to know each other a little bit, I found a little bit about her, her early life. And, and in her early life, she was so horribly abused by her father and then by relatives in the family, and it just broke my heart. And I looked at her and I said, I feel like I need to apologize just for being a guy. You know, it's, it, it is horrible horrible that someone whether technically male or female that, that they would uh, treat someone else like that especially when it's someone that's a child that you are really there in your care they you are the trustee over those child over that child okay that, that they belong to god but he's put them in our care and when i have heard and and, and, the, and the sad thing is i've heard too many stories like that well today I feel a little bit the same way in a different aspect. And, I, and I, almost, I almost feel like I need to apologize for being an American. I grew up in the um, Leave it to Beaver era. And people say that didn't exist. It did. It did. 
I could get on my bike and I could ride anywhere in the city of Sacramento and not be worried about it. Uh, my parents sent me out, my mom, my dad worked, my mom didn't. Um, and we could go in summertime and, and in decent weather, we could go out and we could, we could be gone for hours and mom wouldn't worry about us. Um, half a dozen kids from our block would walk to, uh, um, and she, she did want it to be the, a group when we would go, because we walked about a mile and a half to a, a, a city swimming pool back then. It cost a dime to get in. Um, and um, we would walk there, and we would just swim until we were worn out. And then we would walk home. And nobody thought a thing about that. We would play in the dark after dark. We would play kick the can and all of those kinds of things in our neighborhood. And it was dark. And, and, and you know, it's like mom and dad aren't freaking out because the kids aren't in it dark yet. Um, so, yes, there was a time frame that leave it the beaver type of attitude or type of uh, 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 lifestyle was actually real. Um, I realized that during that time, evil happened. I, I, I don't believe it didn't happen. All of the things that we're aware of, no, let me scratch that. Many of the things that we're aware of now, much more um, aggressively aware of because of all of the coverage by news and stuff, um, happened back then, but we just, it, it was not as prevalent. Um, I just read a list of, 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 of things, and I'm not going to read them. There's over 100 items on this list. And, and, and it ties in with what I'm talking about here because, um, in fact, technically, folks, it's two sides of two sheets of paper. The lines are single spaced mostly, and it is full. I grew up living America. I still love America. I believe that, no, I have believed that God was not finished with America. But I am beginning to question that. Not in hopeless abandonment of all, of, of, of all thought that that could still change. But I just, I just want to, okay. And, and, and if you disagree with me, love me, okay. My greatest thought is the kingdom of God. My greatest heart is not America. My greatest heart is the kingdom of God. But I think you need to, you need to, um, I'm not even going to read all of these because it would take all, all, all of my preaching time. And we're not here for you to hear my gripes and my, my, my concerns and my frustrations. Um, but if, if, you voted for, if you voted for the Democratic Party this year, this is what you voted for. Higher prices, rapidly rising food costs, um, U.S. not being in, energy in, independent despite our vast resources. And in that same category, there's like three times that many things. If you voted for Democrat, you, for, you voted for drag queens telling stories to children. It's the Democrats that push that and defend it when it is being challenged. Um, if you, you voted for Democrats, you voted for school boards um, that tell parents that they have no business telling the school board how to run the, how, what their children should be taught. Um, you're, you are voting for school boards that encourage pornography things that it, I have, this is literally, I've seen this on YouTube as someone filmed it. Um, a school board, a woman is reading a, a book that's in the school library and they shut her down because they said that's, that's indecent and we cannot allow you to read that in here. But it's in the school library for third and fourth graders. Wow. Okay, we're not talking about college level, we're not talking about high school. The, the um, yeah, okay. 
again, this is, this is, you're, you're voting for those who want the criminals to be let back in the street. I just read high, headlines in the newspaper the other day. A, a man who had been convicted of murder was released back in the street and killed another person. Okay, murderers are set free within 24 hours. Um, okay. God's definition of one man, one woman, marriage destroyed. Um, pride events taking over uh, even in, into elementary and, and, and middle schools. Um, you're voting for those who would like women to get into, men to get into women's sports and take over their sports um, and take over their locker rooms. Women, girls have actually been told that they cannot be in their locker room if they cannot share it with uh, uh, a young man who considers himself a, a girl. And if you, are, if you cannot willingly let that girl, that, let that, he, they would call him a girl, let that young man who thinks he's a girl be in that locker room, then you can't go into the locker room. You just lost your rights to your own locker room. Abortion, with all the horribles of things about abortion, and I won't go that any farther in that because that, that, that grieves me tremendously. If you voted for Democrats, you voted to defund the police, give rioters the right to attack police stations, and then defend them when they get uh, arrested for burning down the building and then they get released. Uh, we wanna replace police with social workers. You voted for a Democrat, you voted to have no borders for our nation. You voted for um, Yeah, if you're a citizen, you have to comply with strict COVID over-regulation. But if you're an illegal immigrant, you don't have to comply at all. Okay, not at all. It's just, it, you just don't, it doesn't happen. Um, illegal immigrants were put on airplanes without any COVID anything, without even masks, and they were flown around the country. And if you don't think that that's correct, just, just search it out on the internet. Don't, go, don't Google it, go to another one. Um, if you, if you voted for Democrats, you voted for, for those who believe that all whites are racist and oppressor, all. If you are white skin, you are automatically an oppressor, okay? Now, there might be, I think there's, if, if there is, it's not very, very much. There might be a little bit of one, one kind of racism or another kind of racism in my heart that I don't know about. But one of the things that I do know is I do know that the kingdom of God. You know, you know, in the Bible, there's only really two groups of people, Jews and Gentiles. That's it. That's it. The Bible doesn't list a whole bunch of Now, it mentions a couple of them that, are, that, are, that were black. But it, but it doesn't talk. It talks about two races, two groups, Gentiles and Jews. And then, and then it says in Christ Jesus, even those two are made together as one. Okay? Um, just like there won't be a... Methodist corner of heaven, folks. There won't be a white corner of heaven. And there won't be a Latino corner of heaven. It's just not going to be there. Um, okay. If you vote Democrat, you vote to squelch free speech. You can just underline that. And there's a whole lot more in that area. Uh, if you voted Democrat, you voted to... Um, Destroy the nation's infrastructure due to the use of fossil fuels. Because we don't want fossil fuels anymore. Let me just point this out. Sometimes people don't, even our, even our government officials either are knowingly ignorant or they just have a program that they're pushing no matter what. But if we replace all of the, well, no, let me back up for a second. Right now, with the, what, does anybody know what percentage of electric vehicles we have in America? Is it like 3%? I think it's less than five, okay? Did you know in Texas, in this last summer, they had asked uh, a Tesla, sent an email out to all of their owners and said, don't charge your cars during the daytime because you're gonna, you're gonna max out the, um, um, the electrical grid and, and we will go to brownouts. California had to do the same thing, okay? They're telling them now that you might not be able to charge during the winter because, the, because this is gonna be a cold winter and they need all of the electricity to keep the heaters going. Okay, now that's with, well, that's with between three and 5% of our, of our vehicles being electric. If we went to, just think of it right now, if we went to 100% electric vehicles right now, you would have the greatest electrical rationing that you have ever seen on the face of the earth. 
you would be able to plug your car in one time every three months, probably. Okay, because literally think of how many millions of cars there are in the United States. I'm not sure if it hits a billion, but it's a lot of cars. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, if you vote Democrat, you vote for the government to have the right to force you to put something in your body you do not want. Okay, and, and I'll tell you what, there are some things in this particular area that really, really, really upset me because they, the federal government broke their own law to force people to take the COVID vaccine when it was still um, experimental. The federal law says it is against the law to force anybody to take a, a, an experimental drug against their will. And before it was even approved, it was still experimental. They were, they were telling people, you don't get a shot, you don't work. That's illegal in their own laws, but they just ignored it. If you vote Democrat, you vote to have the mentally ill and the drug addicts to take control in the destiny of our neighborhoods. Um, yeah, if you voted Democrat, you voted for an FBI and, and, and a um, um, Department of Defense. No, not Defense, but what's the, what's the judicial? Yeah, IRS, FBI, and a couple others that are now politically motivated and politically run. Um, they um, literally use, they have weaponized our, our system rather than, um, rather than using our system for the way it was designed. Um, if you voted for Democrat, you voted for the party which considered voting God out of their party platform. Um, yeah, if you uh, voted for the Democrat, you voted for our military to be neutered. Um, you vote for Democrat, you voted for uh, Israel to stand alone um, that with, no, with no agreement with the United States. Um, okay, yeah, there's a few others here, but like I said, there's a lot. Oh, um, and, and um, um, the, 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 right, the guy who wrote this says this, to the extent that a nation follows the biblical principles of government, to that extent, there is a reduction of human pain, suffering, and poverty. To the extent that a nation refuses to follow the biblical principles of governance, to that extent, there will be an increase in human pain and suffering and poverty. I did a study when I was in college one time, um, years ago, because um, I was in a class and the talk, professor was talking about something about the negative impact of Christianity in the world. And so I just did a research. And when I did research, I found some very interesting things. When Christianity would move into a nation, orphans started being taken care of. Widows started being taken care of. Mentally ill started being taken care of. Senior citizens that were old started being taken care of. Okay, medical, how many hospitals in Springfield were started by churches? Okay, hospitals were started by churches. Universities were started by churches, okay? This wasn't because they, they elected better government. This was because the people's lives changed. And they began to be more Christ-like in their reactions and in their actions towards their community. And they, and they looked at it not in a way of, of what's in it for me, okay? Now... Can I say that the business has to have a little bit what's in it for me? If a business doesn't make a profit, they won't be here next week. So there, and, and, and by the way, someone one time um, in our own church uh, uh, preached and, and, and said, what's the, what's the kingdom alternative for um, the profit motive? I went home and pondered about that. And I pondered and I pondered and I pondered and I thought, God built profit into his system. When one tree, when one seed goes into the ground, you don't get one fruit. In fact, God built big profit. When a fish sows uh, eggs and another fish comes along and fertilizes those eggs, we've got some in our little pond, okay? We had, we had like six fish in our pond last two years ago. Now we've got probably 50. It's getting, it, it, we got to take some of those out because it's getting overstocked, you know? But, but God's, God's, God's plan is, the difference is, 
the difference between profit, honest profit, and greed. Now, greed is ungodly. It is ungodly. And we've got some greedy people in our government, folks. It is ungodly. Now, profit motive, and you know, I, 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 I um, you know, sometimes it's like, when does it go from profit to greed? And, and it's, the, it's the heart attitude. Okay, it's a hard attitude because if, if that profit is turned around and used to, for, for positive things, I don't have a problem with somebody becoming a multi-billionaire. If they use that money for blessing other people and not, they don't just stockpile it up in their bank account or something, you know. So, but I think the reason that this, I went with this and then I'm preaching what I'm going to preach now is I have... I have been greatly disappointed by the votes in the American people. And this is when I say, I'm not sure where God is on this. I was just reading um, in my daily reading. Okay, I was just reading. Um, God's plan for the people of Israel was to go into Canaan's land the first time they got there. I don't, I don't think any biblical scholar anywhere would, 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 be, would say different than that. God's plan was we go through the wilderness, we come up to, the, to Canaan's land, we go into Canaan's land, and we conquer it, and we establish Israel. Those people went up, went in, and came back with a bad report, and they said, we can't do it, we can't do it, we can't do it. Now... God is God, and beside him there is no other. God can do anything he wants, including, according to, was it uh, John the Baptist that said he could raise descendants to Abraham from, from these stones? Okay, I don't think John the Baptist was lying. I think God could have done that. Okay. Um, so God could have intervened and done something and forced the issue and got them into Canaan's land. But when the people said no, and, 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 and this isn't as quite as true in the Old Testament as it is in the New Testament, but God's people are volunteer people. Okay, if you say no to God, he's going to come back and stir you again. But if you say no to God, he's not going to kill you. You know, I mean, you'll die eventually, but it, generally it doesn't just kill you because you say no. And even as we're growing in the Lord, we have to continue to say yes to God over and over and over again. We're growing. And he gives us the opportunity to continue or, he, or, or we have the right to say no. So he, have the, he has the situation that they said, they said no. And then my mind jumped to um, when Jesus went to um, Galilee. And it says that he was not able to do many miracles because of their, um, their unbelief. The Son of God was not able to do many miracles because of their unbelief. Now, did their unbelief hinder God, hinder God? I don't think their unbelief is bigger than God. But I think God, because he gave us the ability to choose, honors our decisions. Okay? Now, if America, if God's time for America is not over, and America says, leave, we don't want you, we don't care about you anymore, we're not going to follow any of your guidelines anymore, in fact, we're going to rebel against them, full face. We're going to jump into the rebellion and we're going to stand against it. Is God going to continue to say, okay, you know, I forgive you again and I forgive you again and I forgive you again and I don't know. So now we get into the message. And this is a message of hope. Okay. This is not a message of despair. I'm not quite sure what to do with America, but I know what to do with God. Okay. Because he changes not. Okay. Now, where do you put your trust? I, you know, for, for me, this, is, this was my question because I was facing all of this. And, and, and the word trust is an interesting word because it means a firm belief in the integrity, ability, or character of a person or thing. I can't put my trust in the government of America anymore. I can't do that because they are not people of integrity. Some of them might have ability, but sometimes they sure don't act like it. Okay. We have somebody that we elected, that somebody elected to, to, to Congress. And they said, um, the, the, there were, I guess, uh, um, Amazon, I think, was going to go in and set up a big warehouse or, or, or something. 
and, and they were going to get like $3 billion worth of, of, of um, um, tax uh, write-offs or something, whatever it is. Because they do that. When big businesses come in, a lot of times the government will give them some breaks to help the, to, to entice them to come because it creates so many jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Well, someone who has elected the office that is supposed to be an economics degree, a degree from a university in economics. And this person said, oh, we want to take the $3 billion and use it in better places as though that the government was giving them $3 billion. They weren't giving them $3 billion. And see, I'm not an economics major, folks, but even I know that. When you give someone a tax break, you're not giving them money. You are just not taking it away from them for a while. That's all the difference is. You're not taking it away from them for a while. So there was no $3 billion all of a sudden available to use in better places. Somebody doesn't have a lot of ability in the area of economics. Character of a person or thing. And, and I'll tell you what, there are people who not only not have, they don't have good character in our government, they actually have bad character in our government. It is also, uh, we place our confidence in or rely upon someone or something if we put our trust in that. Okay, so we want to make sure you understand the word trust so that as I, as I talk about it, um, we can be on the same page. Okay, Psalms 20, verse 7, um, and, and this is where this whole thing springs from, is some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. So we're going to look at that for just a little bit. Because I got to, you know, I am working to adjust my mind a little bit here. I, don't, I didn't think I was trusting in government so much, but I think I'm a little more shaken than I should have been. A little more upset than I should have been. So I'm wanting to readjust my heart and my mind, and I can, I can encourage you that way as well. If some trust in chariots, and, 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 and chariots to me speak of the works of men's hands. Okay, man's abilities, the works of men's hands. And, and, as I, and as I thought of that, I thought, okay, how'd that work for Egypt? Okay, how'd that work for Egypt? Egypt trusted in chariots and they brought their chariots down and they were, gonna, they were heading in to take care of, uh, of Israel. Of, of Israel. They're going to kill all the Israelites, all the Hebrews. And um, their chariots got halfway across and they got mired in the mud and got stuck and all of a sudden... It ended. Okay, trusting in chariots didn't work for them. And then I thought of another one I don't have a picture of, but how about Sisera with his 900 chariots? In Judges, it says this. When uh, Barak attacked, the Lord slew Sisera, threw Sisera and all his chariots and warriors into a panic. Sisera leaped down from the chariot and escaped on foot. Then Barak changed, uh, chased the chariots and the enemy army uh, all the way to whatever that word is, killing all of Sisera's warriors. Not a single one was left alive. Wow. And he had 900 chariots, and not one chariot made it through. Some trust in horses. And when I thought about that, I was thinking about natural strength and ability. Like size, training, number, you know, okay, that thing, natural strength and ability. So, um, and, you know, we have football stars, basketball stars that trust in their natural ability. It's not wrong necessarily to, to use your natural ability in a good way, okay? But, but to trust in it and trust in our abilities. Um, and, and, you know, we could even include in that our intelligence, you know, trusting in how smart we are. But how'd that work for Goliath? Goliath was a, was a giant bigger than anybody else in his time. And Goliath was trained as a warrior. Okay? He didn't just have his reliance upon his size. I'm bigger than you. I can put my hand on your head and you can swing your arms at me as many times as you want. And you can't even get close. He didn't just rely on that. He, he was actually a warrior. And, and I don't know that the picture that he would have been would actually look like this. But we know that he wore armor. He, we know that he had a shield, that he had a spear and a sword. We know he had all of those things. He was a trained warrior. And in anybody's even wildest imagination, 
you would not stack those two up and expect the little guy to win. You wouldn't do it. Okay, you just wouldn't do it. You know, if I would... <clears throat> okay, confession, folks. I think this is probably the truth. If I had been in Israel's army and I had seen David going down to fight Goliath, I think I might have started running the other direction. Because if David got defeated, the Philistines were going to be all over us. And I would have looked at that and I would have thought, ain't no way. Ain't no way. It's just, it just can't happen. But God, you know, but God, you put God into the situation and it's a totally different. So how'd that work for Goliath? Well, then let's look at the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. How'd that work for them? You know, they trusted in their abilities. They, they cut themselves. They cried out to their gods and nothing happened. And uh, good old Elijah, he thinks, you know what? This isn't hard enough for God yet. You know? Now, if it's in the drought, I don't know how hard they had to scrounge to get the water to soak that thing down. But, you know, in the middle of the drought, he was taking the stuff they needed the most and throwing it in the ground. But he took those, was it 12? 12? Uh, and, and dumped them on the top, and it was, and it, and it soaked, the, it soaked the thing so much, and then there was a trench dug around it, and the water even went down into the trench and filled the trench around it. It was soaking wet. Now, <clears throat> I think lightning doesn't even care whether it's soaking wet or not, but God didn't. God didn't care, but, and, and Elijah didn't care because he didn't trust. Elijah was not trusting that somehow that he could put that on and the sun's warmth would come and finally catch something on fire or even get one of those little sticks to make your own fire. He wasn't trusting in any of that. <clears throat> and he knew that God, and I don't know if God dropped into his heart to do this or if he just did it because he thought it would be fun. You know, I honestly don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us. But he, he did it. And in the middle of that, wham! Fire fell from heaven, and it not only burnt up the, 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 um, um, the sacrifice, but it, but it literally burnt up the, the, the altar, destroyed the whole thing because it was consumed, okay? And, of course, the water was gone. It didn't even, I mean, water can't handle that. It, it, it just vaporizes. It's just gone. So how did that work for the prophets of Baal? Okay. You know, strength of man, abilities of man. I mean, they were priests of the, of the, of the uh, demonic forces, and it did not matter. God was God. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Now, you know, there he is. And, and I don't know if he looks like that, but there he is. Okay? We will remember. We will remember. Now, it talks about this. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. This is Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Now, the Lord who made heaven and earth is who? Well, hey, but who, who is, which, which of, the, of, of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which one made heaven and earth? Jesus. The Word was made flesh. Jesus, without, the, without Jesus, nothing was made that was made. Okay, so, so and, and folks, I, I'm, not a, I'm not big into trying to figure out how God makes God. I know that there's a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I know that the Word declares clearly that there's only one God. There's not three gods. And I don't even know if I understand that. And so we're not, I'm not going down that path. What I'm talking about here is the Bible tells us that the Lord, my help comes from who? The Lord. The Lord who made the heaven and the earth. So we can pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, and, we, and there is power released. There is, he is the one that we draw our help from, that we draw our strength from. Who do you trust? Who do I trust? You know what? Whether you like Donald Trump or whether you didn't like Donald Trump, Donald Trump did some very, very good things for our country. But you know what? I can't trust in him. I cannot trust in him. I cannot trust in him even being elected again or, or not being elected again. My trust cannot be in the Republican Party or any other party. 
And by the way, I don't trust in the Republican Party either. They're as stupid as the Democrats in some of the things that they do, okay? It is, it is, it is, it is almost, and, and you know, I, I'm, I'm not wanting to be just mean here, folks, but it's almost like you get elected to high enough official position in America and your brain stop working. And I just don't understand it because because literally, okay, folks, literally, there are things that happen. And, 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 and I sit down and talk with a friend and we go, you know what? I, can under, I can't understand this. I can't understand why it's going this way because I can figure out a better way for it to happen. And it's not my job. And these people are smart. And these people have aides and all of these helpers that are experts in these fields. And I know they could figure that out. So why didn't they do it the easy way? You know, why didn't, they, why didn't they fix the situation? And some of it's politics, but that's what I said. By the time you get to a certain height, something happens. Okay. So, we know he's the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who made the heavens and the earth. He is our Lord and King. Uh, Psalms 3, it tells us this way. For you, O Lord. Okay. Remember the uh, seven sons of Sceva? And... Um, they were casting out, trying to cast out some demons. And they said, in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches, get out. And the demon said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? They knew Paul. They weren't his best friend, but they knew Paul. Okay, they knew him. Well, one time I pastor that started this church with some people that he knew um, started playing around with demons. Folks, that's evil. But they would get together and they would bind the spirits and they would bind them to tell the truth. Satan's the father of lies. I don't think he can tell the truth. Okay? And they said, well, you know, you, th you, you think that we shouldn't do that well, but they don't, you know, the demons didn't have anything good to say about you. And he said, I consider that a vote in my favor, you know. If they didn't have anything good to say about me, that's great. I don't want, and then they said, Jesus we know, Paul we know, but who are you? They did it in the name of Jesus and our confidence. The Lord is my shield. But you, O Lord, are my shield. Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You are my shield, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice. You know what? You can't just sit there and hope that something good happens. We've got to cry out. That's what we do, in, especially on Sunday nights as we pray. We're crying out to the Lord on behalf of situations, on behalf of circumstances, on behalf of our country. We're crying out to the Lord because he's the one that we put our trust and our confidence in, not even the voting system. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. And then that little word, Selah, think about that. The God of heaven and earth, the God that created it all out of nothing, he hears your cry. That's astounding. That, that, that's, that's past astounding. I don't know the next level of word. It, but it, 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 it's, it's the, 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 this God, in all his awesome majesty, we cry out to him, and he, and he hears us. And he, and he doesn't just hear us, he pays attention. He responds to it. Verse 5 says, I lay down and slept. Okay, he cried out to God and he found some peace. Okay? You have trouble sleeping after the election, you just get closer to the Lord. <laughs> He'll help you with that. I awoke for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me round about. Well, that's not the way it says on that translation, but that's King James. Okay, but I won't be afraid of them. Okay, and we, the world that we live in is becoming a scarier world all of the time. People are losing their businesses and they're going to jail only because they try to keep a Christian testimony in their business. Okay, this is becoming a scary situation. But our trust is not in ourselves or even in our government or even in our legal system. Our trust is in the Lord. 
God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. And then it says, Selah. Stop and think about that one. Okay. I honestly don't know what I'd do in the middle of an earthquake. I haven't been there. But I'm not sure that I would be able to just say, okay, I'm not going to get afraid because God's with me. I think I would be a little bit scared, a little bit shaky right there, not just in the physical sense, but in the mental and emotional sense as well. But it says, if, if, if all of that is going on all around us, we do not have to fear, okay? And I think mainly that's allegorical, but if our world's falling, around, falling apart around us, we don't have to fear because our trust and our strength is in the Lord and he is a present help in time of trouble. Well, in Zechariah it says this, so he answered and said to me, this is the, the uh, Zechariah was talking to an angel and he had seen a vision. He said, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. What's going to happen in our lives and what's going to happen in this world is not by might, nor by power of anyone's uh, abilities or strengths. It's by the Spirit of the Lord. Yeah. We are being changed to be more like Jesus, not because we have a greater willpower than the next guy. Right. But we are being changed to be more like Jesus because we yield to the Spirit of God working in us. Amen. And our nation is in the situation that it is in because it's rebelling against the, the things of God. So we just have to pray and we have to seek the Lord and we have, to, we have to stand in the gap for our nation in expectation that that will make a difference. Okay, I'm not praying. I'm not praying hopelessly. I'm not praying for our nation thinking it's worthless. Why am I wasting my breath? I'm praying for my nation because I know that God listens. And I'm praying for my nation because I believe that God cares about this nation. I don't believe that we are... God's presence on earth, but we are, we are, a, we have been a godly nation and we have impacted the world in a very good way over the years. Okay. Who do you trust? Why do the nations rage? I, I love this scripture and, and it just, you'll, if you remember, you'll know why the people plot a, a vain thing. The Kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers of the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. Okay. Let's do that. Let's just make this happen. Let's, we're going to, and, and, and can I just tell you, okay, that almost all the weird stuff that's going on out there is a direct rebellion against God. Okay. God says a man and a woman will be married. And they said, oh, nope, that's not enough. God says male and female, he created them. And he said, they said, oh, nope, that's not enough. Okay. Uh, God says every child is a precious treasure to God. And they say, nope, doesn't matter. You can kill them if you want to. I mean, everything that they're doing out there is a rebellion against God. Okay. Um, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break the, their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. But he who sets in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he will speak to to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. And yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. That's a quote from God. God says, I have set my king and you cannot go past what he says. Okay. It cannot happen. Um, okay. Um, verse seven, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I've begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. That's how I pray. And that's why I have the faith to pray. Yeah. And John the Baptist said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He didn't say behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of a certain nation or takes away the sins of a certain continent. Right. But this is the God, this is, this, this is a sacrifice acceptable to God to take away the sins of the world. So I believe with faith we can pray that for the nations to be healed, for the nations to come to salvation, for nations to be turned, and for our nation to be turned. 
And um, we have seen wonderful revivals in other countries. Um, this has been probably eight years ago. My wife and I were in a, a really, really neat uh, a special series of meetings in, um, uh, in Chicago. Uh, Heidi Baker was there and, and her husband, um, Roland Baker. Um, and, and they shared and they really, really had some, this, some wonderful praise and worship, awesome presence of the Lord. And a man spoke that um, was, had been, uh, well, he was not technically a missionary in China. He, had, he was actually a professor, college professor in China that they had hired him to go in. And what they didn't know was during his break times, he'd go out into the back countries and he'd take a little motorcycle, go places cars couldn't go. And he would tell them about Jesus. And he got people saved and, and he was evangelizing and going out. But his heart, his parents had been missionaries and his heart was to mentor um, uh, pastors to mentor uh, those who could touch lives outside that he couldn't even reach. Um, and um, he was getting older and he'd been, and it was like, it didn't seem like that that desire was going to be fulfilled. But he was in a small underground um, um, church gathering and um, he shared a little bit. And there were some three guys in the back that were just average, everyday, um, normal uh, Chinese guys. And uh, when it was over with, uh, they came up to him and they said, would you consider mentoring our pastors? And it's like, <laughs> that's been my heart's cry. Yeah, you know, I don't think he just jumped all over him, but it was like in his heart, yeah. And, and, and he thought about it for many. He said, well, how many pastors are we talking about here? And they said, well, we have about a million pastors that we work with. They were the third largest underground church ministry in China. Can I just tell you, if some church has a million pastors that are a part, I mean, obviously they don't know them all, obviously, but a million pastors, they've had revival in that nation, folks. You can't have a million pastors and not have had revival. You know, India's got revival going on, and yes, they're persecuting the church, and yes, China is as well. But I'll tell you what, God's still God, and he sits in the heavens and he laughs when they say, we're going to strip the, we're going we're to rid our nation of all this religion garbage. And God sits in heaven and laughs. And he says, <laughs> it's, it's almost like, and I don't think this is God's attitude, but it's almost like, okay, devil, take your best shot. You know, you can't do it. God's God, and my trust is in him. Um, okay, we've been finishing up here. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings, and be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear. And see, we've got a whole lot of them that have no fear of the Lord whatsoever. And rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun. Remember, this is in Psalms, and it says, kiss the sun. Speaking of relationship with Jesus Christ, lest he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Now, it's not over until... Okay, this is my last, I think it's my last slide. Double check that. Yeah. It's not over until God says it is. Okay, look at, look at here. It says, I was watching, Daniel, D Daniel was there and, and, and um, he had a vision and he had lots of visions and a lot of them, there's powerful stuff in those visions. And I was watching and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them until, see, there's a limit. God says that this far and no farther. Remember when, when uh, God was talking to Job and, uh, and he said, you know, like, it's like um, um, Job, you know, God was just helping Job to realize how big God was and how small Job was. And it was like, Job, where were you when I set the boundaries to the ocean? That the waters could not, either, here and no farther, here and no farther. 
Okay, God set those boundaries and, and, they, and, and, and the oceans cannot. I don't know where those boundaries are, folks. But, but God set those boundaries and the oceans can't cut across them. They just can't. Okay, until the ancient of days come. And the same, and so, so he, he said until. Okay, there's a limit until the ancient of days came. So up until then in, in the ancient of days, we can look at it in a lot of different kind of ways. But obviously it is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. And look at that. A judgment was made in favor of them. God looked down and said, okay, this is the way it's going to go. Right. It's not going to go this way. This is the way it's going to go. But it was God's timing. A judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Okay, like I told you, uh, this ends in hope. And this ends in expectation of God moving and God touching and God changing. Whether it works the way I would like it to work and whether it works the way that somebody else would like it to work is less important than the reality of God going to work it out right. in the way that is the best way for the kingdom of God and all of the aspects of the kingdom of God. Sometimes we, in fact, I shouldn't, yeah, uh, way too often in our world, we have tribulation. Way too often. It just happens, folks. In fact, Jesus said, in the world you will have. Um, so getting saved doesn't take away all of the problems. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. The world does not tell God how it's going to happen. God tells the world how it's going to happen. And when the, when the leaders, when the rulers of the earth think that they can change and shake off the bonds that God has given, he, he laughs. He laughs. And I don't think he laughs in derision. He just laughs because, what, what was it? Um, do you remember the, 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 um, the, the, the advertisement for uh, the, the, the rabbit with uh, tricks? Silly rabbit, tricks are for kids. You know, it, it's like the rabbit, and did, do you remember the advertisement? Silly rabbit, kicks are for trick, tricks are for kids. I'll get it out right, maybe. You know, and, and that just came to my mind. Like, you know, God's not mad. God doesn't laugh at. The, it's just like silly people. You you think you can you think you can stop? You think you can you think you can change my purposes and my plans? Not ultimately. Maybe sometimes in a certain term, like. Um, the, the children of Israel wanting to go into Canaan's land. Sometimes we might change a small thing, but God's plan is God's plan. And it says until, and until, whenever, when the until hits, go gang, it, it's, it's, it's done. It's over. Okay. And the saints of the, and the saints will possess the kingdom. Let's all stand. Father, we thank you that in a world of disaster, in a world of all kinds of confusion and turmoil, we have an anchor yes. in the veil, within the veil that we can hold on to. We have, a, we have a hope and an expectation in a God who is not moved by the world. And he cannot be pressured and he cannot be pushed and he cannot be manipulated. God is God. And he stands supreme. And so, Father, we thank you that though we cannot trust, and we don't even want to trust, Lord, we sometimes have done it, but God, we don't want to trust in chariots and horses. But we want our trust to be centered and focused and fixed upon you, Lord. God, we don't want to forget we live in a world, and we don't want to forget the need for prayer for this world, and we don't want to forget that there are things that go bad that we are supposed to stand against and, and, and resist and, 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 and work to see them change, Lord. But Father, our trust isn't even in our ability to change them. 
Our trust is in you, maker of heaven and earth. So, Father, I pray for my own heart and mind, and I pray for our, the family of God here in this place, that your peace and encouragement and, 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 and presence, Lord, would minister in a very special way into our hearts and lives. God, help us, Lord, to embrace our trust in you, and that it will be an anchor for us, Lord, that it will be a, a, a high tower, Lord God, that we can run into our trust in you yeah. and we can feel the safety that wraps around us as we do. And God, we pray that you will also help us to know how we're supposed to interact in this world that we're still living in and how we're supposed to touch them. We know our greatest cry, Lord, the greatest burden, the greatest desire we have is to see the lives changed, to see souls saved, Lord God, to see the, 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 the kingdom of Satan being, being stripped, Lord God, of people and they be brought into the kingdom of God. And Father, we pray that you will help us, Lord, to know how to do that in a more uh, specific, aggressive way because we want to see your kingdom come, Lord. We want to see your will being done in lives individually as well as in our world as a whole. And we thank you for this and we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Bless you. Um, Visitors, we're blessed to have you here. Um, if you can hang around and say hi, do that. Um, but we're blessed, and, and it's good. Yeah. This, I don't know if they're supposed to know where you work or not, but this lady helps me a lot. That's just, I'll just say it that way. She helps. She's a real blessing. She helps me a lot. Okay, bless you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.